Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and ladies and gentlemen, do I absolutely have something to share with you. Now YouTube actually listened to me, YouTube listened to us, the community, and ended up reversing a strike that they gave hours ago, literal hours ago. Um, ladies and gentlemen, for full story, last night I was streaming entirely on Twitch TV. I was installing MS-DOS all the way up to Windows 10. Some would say it's the ultimate Windows 10 upgrade. Some would say, like me, that it is the right Chad way of installing Windows 10. All right. All the way from 1985 to 2021. Okay. All right. A installation that survived longer than Billy G's marriage itself. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with all of that said, um, during that stream, I ended up getting a channel community guideline strike. Okay. Actually not a strike, a warning, which is effectively just like your first strike. The moment you get another strike after that, YouTube will stop you from uploading for seven days and it'll be like a full fledged strike. Now, what was a strike for? The strike was for a video where I talked about a certain cash app scam, all right, that was floating around. There are videos on YouTube right now that if you search up cash app, you know, free money, you'll find people who are goading individuals, unsuspecting people into clicking on offsite, you know, areas, entering personal information and being effectively scammed, right? It's something that's existed on here since the beginning of time. It's not just a YouTube problem. It happens all the time on Twitter, Facebook, whatever other media platforms out there. I like to raise awareness to it because the more and more you raise awareness, the more and more you drown that shit out in the algorithm and the more and more, it, the less and less it works against the average user base. OK, now, since this happened, I may not ever make those kind of videos because the system is actually against me this time. And let me explain why. So I ended up getting a community guidelines warning, right, which happened in the middle of the night. So I decided, OK, I'm going to argue this. I've received a strike in the past when I covered things like nostalgic web browsing and I accidentally streamed hardcore, you know, adult videos by mistake, hardcore adult, you know, things. I deserve that strike. I'm a big boy. I understand I made a mistake. I wasn't going to appeal that. So I decided I'm going to definitely appeal this community guideline strike. So I go over here and I type in, you know, this eloquent statement. And ladies and gentlemen, if you look at the time here, 105 a.m. by the way, that's 105 a.m. I literally did this on my phone. Literally within a minute, if anything, a second later, 106, 106 a.m. Okay. Hi, some ordinary gamers. We have reviewed your appeal within a minute for the video in question. We reviewed your content carefully and have confirmed that it violates. Now, I'm just gonna say that video was 12 minutes long. Since then, YouTube has reversed the strike, okay? If you open up the actual strikes I've got, I've got a guideline here. If I review the content, appeal was rejected. If I go to my strikes page, I have no community guideline strike. So things are a lot better. Now, the reason why this pisses me off exceptionally is the appeal system is the only way a creator can appeal the video and potentially get it back. You cannot review a video carefully that is 12 minutes long that quickly within 30 seconds and come to the conclusion that it is promoting of a scam, okay? If I literally go to that video right now, Cash App um, Scam, for instance, which is actually now back up. It is 12 minutes and 19 seconds long. I click on that video within the first 30 seconds. Great, I'm getting an actual I'm getting an actual scam ad on mine. That's, that's just wonderful. I'm not even gonna go there. But ladies and gentlemen, okay, that video came back. You cannot physically review anything of that sort. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the more and more you go down into the situation, when you read this email, it gets even wilder, okay? How this affects your channel, we won't be putting your content back up on YouTube. That's not even the worst. If your appeal was for a warning, you will never be given another warning in the future. It sticks onto your channel till the day YouTube is dead. And then if it was a strike and you appealed it and YouTube automatically carefully reviewed it within 30 seconds, it will stay on your channel no matter what. Now, to me, that almost sounds like it's almost way better to never argue or appeal a strike because if the, if the appeal process literally is done within a minute or two, where there is no way it's carefully reviewed, it's another bot that looks through the video again, at that point, it's bad. There is a lack of distinct human moderation. Now, I don't want to make a video where it sounds like I'm complaining about YouTube because everyone can do that. I think the best way is to offer solutions solutions. YouTube is one of the biggest video sharing services ever, okay? And it will always probably stay that way, all right? There is alternate platforms out there. And for a lot of people that say band together and make a new platform, you simply can't with how the scale of YouTube is, all right? You need a shit ton of money. You'd be operating on losses for years. But 
To me, when I look at a system like this, the best way to really offer a solution is to almost allow some level of peer review. Why is it, if I was CTO of YouTube, why can we not have an application like YouTube reviewers, right? Like YouTube reviews on the Google Play Store or the iOS Store or, or anything where, player, where people can download the app on their phone. They can join a program where not everybody gets in, not everyone gets into the program. People with a verified history get into the platform. YouTube sends them a little push notification and says, hey buddy, can you review this video real quick? They review the video. It probably gets sent to three or four other people. So like you get a peer review and it, you know, sort of averages out what every reviewer is saying and then says, okay, if all these four reviewers think a video is good and it doesn't violate the guidelines, bring it back up. Effective human moderation. YouTube is now allowing ads on videos that aren't even part of the YouTube partner program. So it's not like they're not going to be making money anymore. YouTube can offer a crumb of cash to each of these reviewers for like, maybe give them like 20 cents. 30 cents, I don't know, a dollar for every review that they do or every once in a while. It's a pretty decent, you know, side gig for people. Okay, you know, you can earn a little bit of cash on the side and actually moderate on the platform. That would kind of be cool. Okay, I don't know about the legality and ethics behind it. I'm sure there's a lot that goes into that, but that would be one interesting, effective solution. Now, the reason why I'm so up in arms about this is that, ladies and gentlemen, the only way to get this fixed, okay, is right now, unless you don't, unless you have a Twitter following, you're out of luck, okay? For some reason, Twitter, YouTube, I, there's probably some level of, like, humiliation kink going on. The only way that I was ever able to overturn this was to go to Twitter and make a big giant hoopla about it, a hoopla that earned 14,000 likes and a shit ton of retweets, okay? Now, it's because of this that YouTube's, you know, Twitter team came in and it's like, oh, we'll send this to the appropriate department. Sure. Thanks for bringing this to our attention. We've passed this along to the team for review. Okay. And then like literally 48 minutes from now, hey, your video is mistakenly taken down. It's back up. We're sorry this happened. And someone from our team will reach out to you an email for all this nonsense. Now, I knew given my channel size and my presence on Twitter and social media, that I was probably going to be just fine, okay? I'm not saying this as a flex. I'm saying this to show you how broken the system kind of is, okay? Because unless you're popular, unless you're a Some Ordinary Gamers, unless you're a Critical, unless you're an Ethan Klein, unless you're a H, unless you're any of these people, unless, you know, you're like Markiplier, unless you're a big name in the figure, unless you have a YouTube connection, unless you have anybody in the business that can help you out, you're not gonna get yourself helped. Now, what happens to the people that are smaller creators? No one's watching out for them at all. Now, this is CoffeeZilla, and I've mentioned his channel before. He's not a tiny creator by any imaginations, but he's probably not going to immediately have a YouTube partner rep on him, okay? I don't know what his Twitter following is, but he may not have enough of the Twitter cloud to immediately you know, humiliate YouTube and, you know, bring them into internet water sports. He ended up getting his channel deleted for like a day. For a day, his channel got deleted, and it got reinstated so YouTube fixed their mistake however it was a mistake that never should have happened okay and if the hoopla wasn't raised if the community didn't retweet him if he didn't put YouTube to the humiliation fetish on Twitter I don't know if he would have ever gotten his channel back things were insane now, even going further, there are, you know, people like TapLap, for instance, who, if you don't know who TapLap is, uh, I've looked at him in, I think, the same Cash App scam video, where uh, this is his channel right now, and, of course, from his channel, like, I, I can probably see why an AI would fall for this and think that it's scams, but I've looked at some of his videos where he's, like, opening 20 free stocks, and quite literally, it's not clickbait, he is just straight up opening 20 free stocks, at least from what I can see, okay? At least from what my eyes are functioning. Now, he ended up getting the same issue, okay? The same problem. You can literally read it right here, okay? Where he says, same exact policy issue as ordinary gamers. So the scams, deceptive guidelines. Same exact content, same exact time, appeal instantly rejected. And he made a really good point that I want to reiterate. I got my strike reversed. I'm a smaller YouTuber, but I deserve the same treatment. I fucking agree, okay? I haven't watched his video. Hey, maybe he might not be innocent, but for, it, it, from what I've seen on his videos, okay, like, it, it, he's literally not clickbaiting me. Like, I clicked on, like, three videos, and I got exactly what I wanted. I'm sure he was just calling out the scam as it was. And this is where I believe that there is that level of AI that sits down, immediately pulled up both of our videos because of the content that we looked at that was very similar, and no context, no thinking twice, just got us removed immediately, okay?
So here's another situation of a YouTuber known as Super Mario T who ended up having his Yoshi montage video, a six minute Yoshi montage video effectively removed because it was violating, I shit you not, I shit you not, the policy of violent criminal organizations. Now I have no idea if there was some weird like crazy stuff going on. Apparently to him, he, he I guess left in some weird like Allahu Akbar meme from way back. This is when edgier content creators put in a lot of stuff. Nowadays you can't do that shit. The system probably picked up his video detected that snippet of video, that one, two seconds of a meme, and probably said, oh my god, this is clearly an evil video. There's no joke. Computers are dumb. They have no idea of nuance. That's why you need human checkers to realize, oh, I guess this guy put in a, you know, tasteless joke. He's not about, you know, violent criminal organizations. This is such a heavy policy strike. He ended up getting his channel demonetized completely, okay? It ended up completely demonetizing the channel. Now, ladies and gentlemen, YouTube decided, oh, don't worry, we passed us along to the team we'll let you know hey as for your monetization we made a mistake during the review process and your channel is now back in the partner program and i don't know if they ended up removing a strike i'm pretty sure that they did uh given the fact that they had to reverse the monetization i'm pretty sure his strike is pretty much gone again it literally happened because he ended up managing to raise that hoopla on the internet rightfully so now, this isn't just the only case. This is even when it gets wilder. At the same time, a channel known as The Real Rejects, a pretty big, you know, group of creators, decided to come out, all right, upload a video, all right, years ago, apparently. And uh, when they deleted that video from their channel, YouTube actually issued a community guideline strike on a video that was deleted. Okay, so I theorize this is probably because the video was in some review pipeline, and even if it was deleted, the review pipeline was able to check. But it's really odd how you can get your channel striked on a video that is no longer present. That's kind of scary to me, okay? Now, he ended up, I think, maybe getting it reversed. I'm not sure. Uh, this is all really fresh stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to sort of tie things off over here. The system is broken. And I've shown you plenty of examples of smaller creators who are currently fighting for their channels and their livelihoods. YouTube is not my job, okay? For me, YouTube is a hobby, but for some people, it's pretty much how they manage to eat day in and day out. It's how they pay their rent. It's how they pay their mortgage. YouTube is all about mental health, and nothing saps mental health on this platform harder than YouTube telling you the video you worked hard on is suddenly a 10 out of 10, and hey, fewer people are watching, and then getting rewarded for almost no effort and having that video be a 1 out of 10. YouTube is bad for your mental health if you're on a platform where the bots can literally give you strikes on your channel in succession that if you get too many of them you will literally have not only your monetization revoked but the entire presence of your youtube channel removed I don't think it's okay to have an entire YouTube system where we rely on basically kink shaming Twitter, YouTube until into sending our videos for an actual review. The bot system needs an overhaul. Okay. And you know, I could sit here and complain for day in and day out, but the actual solution I gave in the beginning is just what came out from the top of my head. And I think it's a pretty good solution. If I was like CTO of YouTube, I'd probably look into that. But that being said, I'm just a fat Indian guy on the internet gaming and having a good time vibing. Who knows what happens in the future? Who knows how things go? But what I do understand is this shit needs to change. It's not okay on the platform. And it shouldn't be okay if you're a larger creator and this doesn't affect you because at the end of the day, you can bitch to Team YouTube and you can get a proper review. I'm more worried about the smaller guys. I'm more worried about the smaller guys and gals who have no recourse, who will literally sit there for months on end, unable to get this resolved because they simply cannot raise the attention that other people can. This kind of review process shouldn't be exclusive to like the bigger creators. It should be something that should be overhauled for everyone in the process because I'm sick and tired of seeing this happen to anybody out there because it's a giant headache that both parties have to go through and it just shouldn't have to be this way. And I understand YouTube cannot hire human beings for every single part of the world. You want to know why? YouTube would have to literally hire a country and bring back slave labor in order to have enough people and resources and manpower to actually do human moderation. The idea of a proper peer review moderation that YouTube can select invite people into would be a far better idea than anything else okay ladies and gentlemen that's where i'm going to leave it at i hope the people that i mentioned here get their strikes resolved some of them have some of them are sitting out in limbo so until then i'm going to be championing for them and i'm going to do what i can and if youtube wants to you know bring out an olive branch i would love to sit down and work with someone at youtube to help devise some solution to this okay because going forward we need to have a solution and that being said if you like what you saw please like comment and subscribe dislike it if you dislike it i am out.